everyone. Welcome to our presentation. We will be talking about self-care today and how self-care isn't selfish. Um, my name is Andrea Bjornstead. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Counseling and Human Development at South Dakota State University, where I, where I also serve as the Mental Health State Specialist in SDSU Extension. I'm also a licensed professional counselor in South Dakota. And I'm Amber Letcher. I'm also an associate professor in the Department of Counseling and Human Development. And my extension role is as the 4-H Youth Development Specialist. And hello, everybody. I am Nikki Prash. I am the Health and Physical Activity Field Specialist with SDSU Extension. Um, my primary role is promotion of physical activity across the state of South Dakota. I'm also a registered yoga teacher, um, so I will be talking a little bit specifically about yoga today. Okay, moving forward into our presentation, we are going to cover multiple topics, including our stress signs and symptoms, talking about what's all on our plate, and um, moving into some self-care practices, including yoga and mindfulness. So beginning, let's talk a little bit about stress. And everyone experiences stress in the workplace. Um, nobody is immune to stress. We experience stress um, on a daily basis. Most people experience more stress when they perceive a situation as dangerous, difficult, or painful. And when we don't have the resources co to cope, that's when we really struggle. So thinking about your work site, um, what are some examples of stressors? So for example, as a professor or extension mental health specialist, some of my stressors at work include deadlines, um, balancing multiple tasks, and working with um, colleagues in, in different environments and the virtual environment right now versus in the office. So lots of different stressors happening. So thinking about some, what are some examples of stressors that you experience at work? So thinking about what's all on your plate, I want you to take just a minute to uh, grab a piece of paper and draw a big circle on it that will represent a plate and take just a minute to write down all of your current stressors and worries. And it's not necessarily just limited to the workplace, but also just within your life currently, what are some stressors and worries? So just take a minute to write those down. Okay, next slide, please. I just provided some examples of some things that may or may not be on your plate. So for example, relationships, you know, balancing friends, uh, maybe you're caring for parents, or maybe you are a parent yourself. We have, you know, lots of different parental responsibilities. Uh, caring for our children. Uh, so right now, for example, I'm balancing work as well as taking my children to school, picking them up, uh, balancing all of their sports, soccer practice, games, uh, gymnastics meets, all those sorts of things. So balancing all of those uh, responsibilities. Maybe you're dealing with an injury or an illness uh, or, or some type of physical disability. Finances are a worry uh, at different points in time. So balancing your finances. Uh, maybe with the pandemic, you're concerned about social isolation, you're feeling pretty lonely and separated from those that you love. I know a lot of people who are struggling with not being able to see their loved ones because those might be more at high risk. Uh, maybe you're experiencing some grief and loss. You've experienced a death of a loved one recently. On top of that, we have job tasks. Maybe there's some conflict in the workplace, balancing all those different responsibilities you have in your job. And also thinking about future, uh, you know, whether you're uh, having your kids go to school or not, children going to college, maybe you're experiencing empty nest where all your kids are gone. 
um, as well as retirement planning ahead for your future. So thinking about, you know, maybe you have different ones on your plate and that's okay. Everybody experiences different stressors. So we just listed all of our different stressors. Now it's time to think about what that stress feels like. And lots of times um, we experience stress by um, experiencing it physically. So thinking about when you're the most stressed out, where do you feel it in your body? Where do you experience it? And how do you know when you are experiencing stress? So some cognitive symptoms of stress uh, may include memory problems. I know that when I'm really stressed out, I'm constantly asking Siri on my phone to remind me of meetings. And I've been doing it so much lately. I'm pretty sure Siri is pretty tired of me. Um, maybe there's an inability to, inability to concentrate or poor judgment, seeing only the negative at work. And, and sometimes work environments can get pretty negative, right? Where everybody cycles into, uh, maybe experiencing discouragement. Uh, so when, when we only see the negative, it's hard to uh, pull ourselves out of that cycle. Anxious or racing thoughts can occur as well as constant worrying. And usually when I'm presenting in person to an audience, I'll ask a room how many people worry. And I would say about 80% of people raise their hands that they, they do worry. Um, so if you are a worrier, you're not alone. Next slide, please. Some emotional symptoms of stress can be moodiness. I know that when I'm stressed out, I can go to zero to 10 really fast. Uh, irritability or short temper may occur. Agitation, maybe some inability to relax. Feeling overwhelmed, especially at work when we're balancing not only our responsibilities at work, but across our entire life in multiple systems. Um, sense of loneliness and isolation can happen maybe. Um, Maybe you work by yourself and on top of the social distancing that's happening, you're experiencing even more loneliness than, than normal. Um, so making sure you connect with others is important. And we can also experience some depression or general unhappiness when we're, when we're stressed out. Physical symptoms um, may include aches and pains. When I get stressed, and so for example, this is my workplace at home. Um, and so sitting at my desk, when I get stressed, I can feel it in my shoulders. Um, sometimes I can feel it in my stomach. My stomach might get tight. I might get a lump in my throat, especially if I'm really stressed. So we might experience some changes in digestion, um, maybe some nausea, chest pain, rapid heartbeat. Um, some people experience panic when they're pretty stressed and that panic can all sit right here and can make it hard to breathe. And then frequent colds. If you have difficulties um, shaking a cold, that can be a sign of stress. Behavioral symptoms. And some of these fall on a continuum Sometimes we eat a lot when we're stressed. Maybe you know what you've heard the, the term emotional eater. Um, maybe you eat a lot when you're stressed and some people, uh, maybe that your stomach is so tight that it's difficult to eat. Sleeping too much or too little as well. I've heard of numerous people, you know, I have uh, lots of clients that tell me, oh, I just cannot sleep. My brain won't shut off. I, I'm sitting here worrying. I'm laying in bed worrying. Um, we also isolate, we kind of isolate ourselves um, from other people when we're really stressed. And I'll speak for myself that sometimes I really do. And my family knows when I'm stressed because they, they probably haven't heard from me in a while. So they'll call me and say, hey, hey, Andrea, we haven't heard from you in a while. Are you pretty stressed right now? What's going on at work? Um, we can procrastinate or neglect responsibilities. We can also use some ineffective coping strategies when we're stressed, those, those behavioral signs, such as using alcohol, cigarettes, or other drugs to relax, and as well as any nervous habits. Maybe you pace, maybe you bite your nails, those sorts of things. So thinking about, okay, so we've listed all of our stressors on that plate. Uh, we now know all of the signs and symptoms. And hopefully as I was going through all those, you made a mental note of which ones apply to you. And I gave you some examples in mind. Do we all have the same stress signs? 
No. And sometimes we're not even aware of some of our stress signs. If you were to ask a loved one, hey, what do you notice about me when, when I'm stressed out? They might list something completely different than what you notice in yourself. So sometimes it's helpful to check in with other people on what your stress signs are. So thinking about, okay, I experience this in my body when I get stressed. We recognize it, but we need to manage it. So thinking about that, how do you manage your stress? So going back to the plate that you drew with all of your stressors on it, I'd like you to take just a minute and circle the stressors that you can control. Because those are the ones that we need to focus on. The unproductive stressors, the ones that we cannot control, only contribute to more stress. So circle the ones that you can control. So for example, maybe I can control my relationship with my parents. Maybe um, I work on um, having more open communication with them or being more open and honest with my worries with them. So I might circle my parents. <coughs> Maybe I can circle so social isolation a bit. Now, some of it we can't control because of the pandemic and that sort of thing, but I can maybe connect with my friends on Zoom or do some social distancing outside, planning certain things. So maybe I might circle that one. Um, finances might be one I circle where I really plan a budget and be more mindful of a budget when I'm spending money or investing money. So thinking about all those, which ones are productive that you can circle that you can control? Again, the unproductive ones are the ones that we need to let go of. The ones where, hey, I'm worried about my kid at school um, because you know maybe she's not working as hard as she could. Well, I can only control so much. I can't control my kid at school, right? But I can encourage her to be um, focused and do the best that she can at school. So there are some things we need to let go of um, and, and manage our unproductive worries a bit. These are just some suggestions on healthy stress management. Earlier I mentioned, or I asked you, how do you manage your stress? So hopefully you have something that you use to manage your stress. So these are just examples, deep breathing, um, Amber, later on, we'll go through some mindfulness techniques with you that will focus on breathing. Exercising regularly. So Nikki's going to show you some yoga poses. And uh, I exercise daily. And if I didn't, I think my stress level would be always at a 10. And so I know what works for me. Um, it may not work for you, but I know that it works for me that I can keep my stress level down if I, if I exercise. Eating healthy. You know, we feel good about ourselves. And our body feels good when we put nutritious food into our body. Um, I don't know if you notice that when we stress eat and we put, you know, whether it's um, ice cream or cookies or, or chips, um, whatever your go-to is when you're stressed, sometimes we feel worse because our body isn't getting the nutrition that's, that's helpful for it. Effective time management. What works for me is I make lists and I cross off things on my list, but focus on the things that take the most time for you that you can cross off your list. Engage in hobbies or interests, obtain enough sleep. I know sleep can be difficult, especially if you have little ones um, or uh, you can't shut your brain off, but really focusing on your breathing. Avoiding alcohol or drugs, <laughs> laughing. So lots of times I'll talk to an audience, I'll be like, when's the last time you had a really good belly laugh? Um, laughing can be very, very therapeutic when we're stressed. Keeping a positive attitude, I talked previous, previously about, especially at the work site, um, uh, when we all engage in those negative thoughts, you know, maybe things aren't going well at work and everybody, maybe morale is down really low. That's when we really need to start focusing on those positive thoughts. Okay, how can we turn these negative thoughts into something and reframe them into something more productive, something that we can work with? Spending time with the people you love, whether it's um, social distancing or online uh, over Zoom or some other way that you connect. Seeking out social support kind of goes with spending time with the people that you love. Maybe it's time to schedule a physical with your doctor or if you're really stressed and because there's a fine line between stress and experiencing depression or anxiety. So if it's persistent and pervasive and you can't shake 
your stress and you feel all these feelings all the time, maybe it's time to talk with a counselor. And I already kind of talked about physical activity, but at the work site, it's important to get up and move. If we sit in our office space, or maybe, maybe you're a farmer and you sit in your tractor, or um, what, what, whether your, whatever your work site looks like, it's supposed to, it's so important to get up and move. So making sure you take maybe a, a 15 minute break, go for a quick walk, um, maybe stand up and do some stretches, uh, make it a daily routine. Uh, and this can be indoors or outdoors. You know, right now it's pretty nice outside, so you might move outdoors. Um, but, but later on when it gets colder, you know, might, we need to be creative in, in what we do with our physical activity. Reduce sitting time and then and find support. So sometimes it's helpful with accountability to find that buddy at work that might go for a walk with you um, and take a break with you. And with mental health, uh, right now, uh, you know, I've, I've seen numerous studies where over 50% of people are reporting that they're struggling with their mental health. And so take breaks from the news, including social media. You know, our social media sites can sometimes be ugly places to be uh, and, and can really contribute to our mood and our negative thinking. So making sure you take breaks from social media. Take care of your body with healthy meals, exercising and deep breathing. Again, stay connected with others and then let some light in. You know, uh, uh, the sun is very, very important. So making sure that you uh, can connect that way as well. Thank you, Andrea. And her content is always such a good um, segue into some of the kind of tangible activities that I'm going to um, lead you through and then Amber will lead you through. Um, so I'm going to talk specifically about yoga, but before I um, kind of start talking about the thick of yoga is um, just keeping in the back of your mind that there are many ways to manage your stress and many ways to be physically active. Um, Andrea kind of alluded to some of the ways to be active. So yoga is really just one of the one of the things that fall into the category of physical activity. Um, there's also many levels of yoga, but it's something that you can take um, and hopefully practice on your own in whatever form you'd like to. Um, it's something that's done very easily in a small space if you need to. Um, the sequence we're going through is gonna be in, from our chairs, so we won't even get out of our chairs, but then there's also ways to do yoga, you know, with a yoga mat and having more space and more opportunity to move around you. Um, yeah, so yoga, what is yoga? Um, I'm sure we've all heard of yoga. Some people initially go to the thought that they have to be flexible, they have to do, you know, inversions or headstands to be doing yoga. But as I mentioned, there's so many ways to practice yoga um, that it really can fit whatever you're kind of looking to gain out of the practice. Um, yoga is one of the oldest practices around, um, believe it or not, it's been around for over 6,500 years, some even say over 8,000 years. Um, when it first started, it really started as a way to, um, for individuals to come together within a community and learn from teachers on different ways they could practice um, some of the mindfulness that's tied within yoga and the poses and how it all connects back to our breath and how it's all just so closely related. Um, as I mentioned, um, with the breath and the mindfulness, that is one thing that makes yoga a little different from other forms of physical activity, is that it really brings in that connection of focusing on your breath, using your breath, um, focusing on mindfulness, um, and then also the physical postures that are included with um, the practice of yoga. Um, there's multiple levels of practicing yoga. You can do a full yoga class that is solely focused on mindfulness and maybe more on the side of meditation. You can do yoga classes that are more on the side of high intensity, maybe the yoga sculpt where um, movements are quick and um, they're in, there might be inclusion of weights or other resistance type um, equipment. Um, there's also very deep um, kind of relaxation type yoga classes that really focus on getting the deep stretch in your muscles um, and going through the practice. But the one thing that makes all yoga classes similar is really that connection of a pose, a physical posture, the breath and mindfulness, and then um, really connecting to that awareness of your breath throughout um, your movements during a class. 
Um, and one thing that makes yoga, I feel like I've said one thing a few times, but one of my favorite things about yoga personally is that it can be very malleable to the individual. Um, yoga to me might mean something different to you and how you practice. And as I mentioned before, it's really based on what you want to get out of the practice. If you are simply looking for something um, to do while you sit or while you are in your workplace to kind of stretch your muscles, move your muscles. Um, that's what it can be to you. If you're somebody who's looking for a deeper practice and um, further connecting um, to your breath and the components of mindfulness, um, it can be something you practice outside of work or on your own um, for longer periods of time. So it's really up to you um, what you want yoga to be and how you make it um, personable. So like physical activity, um, a lot of these are similar across the board for any form of physical activity that you um, participate in. But overall, yoga can be very beneficial as it can help reduce the feelings of stress. It can help you improve your coping skills. It can help with an improved um, feeling of self-confidence and improve with that feeling of um, you know, accomplishing something through yoga, maybe a um, after practicing a pose for a while, you're able to get into that pose in a different way that you didn't know um, was possible. It can help um, reduce anxiety, fear, and depression. It promotes relaxation, um, especially through the connection of your breath. And most yoga classes end with some sabhasana where you lay down and you fully let your body relax and your mind relax. Um, it helps promote self-acceptance. Um, it can improve your body image. Um, it can also improve your sleep, appetite, and your overall feeling, feelings and well-being. It can also improve your focus and concentration. So if you're looking for a reason to try yoga, hopefully one of these maybe stands out or one of these is something that really connects with you. Um, so it encourages you to maybe try practicing some form of yoga, again, in whatever level you're interested. So of course, since we've talked a lot about stressors and ways to manage stress, um, this slide just kind of shows additional ways of how yoga can help with that stress management. Um, as I mentioned on the previous slide, it does help promote that feeling of relaxation. Um, Amber, you know, we'll talk about even just some simple breathing exercises that can initially um, give you that feeling of relaxation. So that is something that practicing yoga through your breath and also the poses can help you um, feel a more sense of relaxation. Um, I've talked through the different forms of practice of how you can go through yoga. Um, it, it really, yoga can help balance your whole body's energy and further deepen that mind-body connection um, because of the connection to your breath and the components of mindfulness that are pulled within yoga practice. Um, it really can help you balance out those feelings of control um, between your mind and body. Um, it can help you build your ability to calm, focus, and relax um, in a regular day. Um, through regularly practicing yoga, it can help you handle maybe some of those um, high stress um, experiences you might have and help you relate back to some of the skills you learn through breathing and practicing yoga um, in a, maybe a quicker way. So it can help you um, calm, focus, and relax right away. And then with all forms of physical activity, we have some feel-good chemicals that are released. So the endorphins through practicing physical activity um, can help with the um, feelings of feeling better and the, the chemical side of things within your body. Um, one of the most important things when you do practice yoga, and these two things are probably the hardest, to be honest, is to really keep your mind um, within the moment and stay within the moment. Um, it's really easy to let our minds race and think about multiple things, but as much as you can, if you can focus on what you're doing physically with your body and how your breath feels and really stay in what you're doing in that exact moment, um, the more benefits you'll see. And then also using your breathing, not holding your breath, really focusing on the inhale and exhale as you go through the poses. Um, I think those are some of the most important elements to take away when you um, move into a yoga class or think about doing it on your own is thinking about staying in the moment and using your breath. So with that, we are going to go through a very short um, chair yoga sequence together. Um, I'm going to move my chair back just a little bit. So really depending where maybe you're set up, um, either at home or in a workspace, um, you might have to adjust your chair a little just so you can get in a comfortable position. You know, we want about our arms um, 
wingspan to the side of us so that you can um, spread your arms out and move a little bit. Um, this is something I hope is very easy for you to do right now. And then um, maybe remember some of the things that we're going through that you can do if you do, do need just a quick stretch break um, throughout the day or if you wanna start including yoga kind of on a regular basis. <clears throat> so to get in a comfortable position, let's bend our legs 90 degrees if they're not already. Plant your feet firmly into the ground. Kind of envision that your head is resting against a pillow on your chair. So you get that really nice long spine. You're not hunched forward, you're not arching your shoulders back, but just envision that um, pillow there kind of supporting your head. Take a few breaths here, just start as, starting to notice your breathing rate. Bring a little focus to your breath. You're welcome to either keep your eyes open or close your eyes as we go through this. Just follow my voice and I'll guide you through each pose. And as we sit into this comfortable position, I'm gonna encourage you to kind of think of a mantra or something that you wanna keep in the back of your mind as we go through these poses. It can be, maybe if you are feeling stressed, it can be I'm feeling relaxed. Maybe it's more along the lines of I'm in control. I'm in control of my breath. Maybe it's more the along of the lines of I'm feeling strong. I'm connecting back to that inner strength. And just slowly controlling your breath as you inhale, trying to count four counts. And then at the top, releasing the breath, counting back four counts as you exhale all that air back out. Inhaling again, that same four counts. And exhaling, pushing that air all the way back out through your mouth. With the next inhale, kind of depending on your space, you can either raise the hands out in front of you, reaching up to the sky, or if you have the wingspan in the room, you can also do it on the side. My armrests are kind of in the way right now. So we'll inhale, raise our hands up, and exhale, push all that air back out. So again, really wherever it's comfortable to add a little movement with those arms, inhaling, either all the way up or you can come to shoulder level if you are having some soreness in your shoulders, then exhale, arms back down. Good job. Let's inhale again, trying to shoot for that four count breath. Exhale, releasing any feelings of worry, stress. Inhale, repeating that mantra you just set for yourself internally. Exhale, bringing those arms back down to our sides. This time, let's inhale that left hand coming up overhead, then just give a slight bend towards our right, stretching from our wrist, which mine's out of frame, just a little bit, all the way to your hip. Exhale, come back center, lower that hand, switch sides, same thing, inhaling up to the sky, Slight bend to the side, stretching from your wrist all the way to your hip. Not trying not to hold your breath. Inhale back center, exhale, lower that left hand back down. I'm going to turn just so you can see um, my back a little better, but you're welcome to stay facing the same way. We're going to go into what's called a seated cat cow. So we're going to roll our shoulders forward, rounding our back. As we exhale, then we'll inhale, open the shoulders, pushing that chest back open, inhaling. And then as soon as you're ready to exhale, we'll round the shoulders again, hunching forward, really stretching those shoulders in our back. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, round the shoulders again. We'll do one more full breath, inhaling, open the chest. 
and exhale, rounding the back again. And then slowly taking your time to come back to a nice neutral, neutral spine. From here, we're gonna take a nice big inhale and we're gonna do a seated spinal twist. So we'll take an inhale. With the exhale, you're gonna lead with your chin, then your arm is gonna wrap around, kind of depending on your chair, you can grab below your chair or on the armrest. And really what I want you to do here is focus on a natural twist of the spine. I don't want you to grab and yank because that's what people tend to do. So we'll take an inhale. With the exhale, just naturally twist with the spine. Your, your left hand or your hand in front can kind of rest on the outside of your knee. And then we'll just let that spine twist naturally, continuing with your breath, not holding your breath. One more big inhale. With the exhale, we'll come back forward. Take one full breath here, inhale and exhale. Then we'll inhale again. With this exhale, twisting to the opposite side. So that back hand wraps around. Again, nice natural twist in your spine, gazing out towards the wall or angling it back behind you, breathing through the stretch. Inhale and exhale. One more big full inhale. With the exhale, we'll turn back forward from that seated spinal twist. Next, I want you to take your pointer finger and your thumb. We're gonna wrap it around either wrist. So I'm doing, I'm gonna mirror it for you. So I'm doing my right wrist here. And we'll just make that connection. Your fingers don't have to connect, but we're really just wrapping around the wrist. So we'll take that hand that has the, the wrap of our fingers. We're gonna pull it up towards the sky and gaze out past that shoulder. Just applying a very gentle pull here. This will stretch our shoulder for us, which if you are seated a lot or work from a computer at a desk, you probably carry a lot of tension in your shoulders and your neck. Breathe. Slowly exhale. Let's release that hand, switch sides. So opposite thumb and pointer finger around the opposite wrist. Just gently pull that wrist up high towards the sky. Gaze out past that shoulder. Breathe through the stretch. And exhale. One more full inhale. And with the exhale, let that hand come back down. Maybe shake it out a little bit if you need. We're gonna do one more shoulder stretch and another stretch for our legs. So this one I'm gonna to turn to. So let's take our right hand, we're gonna bend it 90 degrees. Finger is pointing up to the sky. Opposite hand, so left hand's gonna thread under that tricep of that right hand. And here you can either put the palms of your, um, the back of your hands together, or if you can wrap around so the palms connect, you can do that as well. The goal is to really keep those elbows in line with the shoulders, you don't want them hunched down. You want the elbows in line with the shoulders here. So you should be feeling a nice deep stretch in your upper back and those shoulders. Just holding right there. If you feel like you want a little bit of a deeper stretch, you can lift the hands up towards the sky, just gently. Again, breathing through the stretch. Inhale. And with that exhale, unwrap those arms, shake it out a little bit. We'll do the same thing, switching sides. So opposite hand comes 90 degrees. Thread the opposite hand under that tricep. Either back of our hands connect or those palms. Again, elbows, shoulder level, staying right there or maybe reaching a little higher towards the sky. Inhaling and exhaling. Breathing through the stretch. and exhale. Slowly unravel the arms, shake it out a little bit if you need. Um, I think I'm gonna be out of frame for this one. So I'm gonna stand, but this is a hamstring stretch. You can actually do seated. So you can get out of your chairs or stay seated in your chairs. And all I'm gonna have you do is pick one leg 
to extend, I think that black is <laughs> framing it out, but we'll take one leg, step the heel out in front. And if you're seated, same thing, straightening one leg, toes are gonna point up towards the ceiling. And right there, you might feel a big enough stretch in your hamstring and your calf. If you wanna intensify, you can bend at our hips and just reach gently towards the toes. You should feel a stretch in the back of your leg on your hamstring. Inhale and exhale. Bring that foot back together. Same thing, switching sides. So bring the opposite heel out in front, extending that left leg in a straight position. Feeling that stretch or maybe hinging at your hips just gently to feel a little bit of a deeper stretch in our calf and our hamstring. Inhale. Exhale, bring those feet back together. We'll come back into our chairs or just readjust in your chairs. And let's go ahead and do a few neck rolls. Again, if you spend a lot of time driving, seated, your neck and shoulders really carry a lot of tension. So from the neck rolls, let's go into shoulder rolls. and then switching directions of what way you're rolling those shoulders. Rolling it out a little bit. And then allowing yourself to kind of come to a, that position we started at the beginning of class, getting those feet and those legs bent at 90 degrees, bringing back that imaginary pillow, slowly taking your time to inhale, and then if you'd like welcoming the closing of your eyes with the exhale. And just taking a few more moments here to really focus on our breath. Allowing your mind to just stay in the present moment. Don't worry about your to-do list or anything else that's scheduled for the rest of your day or the week. Just really taking the time to notice how your body feels. Paying attention to how the inhale feels and the exhale. Letting go of any area on your body that is feeling tense. With your exhale, release that tension. Allow yourself to think only of your breath. And maybe come back to that mantra you stated at the beginning of class. I am relaxed. I'm in control. Or I am strong. Inhaling again, one more big full breath. And slowly exhaling all that air back out. Gently waking those eyes back up taking those thumbs and pinkies connected. You can place that, those thumbs right on your heart center. Taking another breath and thanking yourself for this moment of practice today and remembering you can always go back to some form of yoga for a feeling of stress relief. Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste. Great. Thank you so much, Nikki. I always feel so relaxed before I come to do my portion of the presentation. Um, we're going to talk the rest of the time about mindfulness. And the yoga is such a good introduction because it includes some of the uh, mindful techniques as well. So you can kind of see what that looks like already before we even get a chance to talk about it. So it's a nice introduction.
You probably are familiar with the word mindfulness. You've, you've heard the term before. Um, it's, it's a lot more commonly practiced today, which is always a good thing. If you're not familiar with what mindfulness is, what does it mean? Um, here are two definitions that I really like. They kind of uh, give you a general sense of what it means to be mindful. And it's generally a, a broad philosophy about being in the present moment and uh, training yourself really to focus on the now. So in that first definition, paying attention on purpose in the present, non-judgmentally. There's lots of lots to unpack there, but uh, the general idea is pay attention to now. And uh, you've heard previously already in our presentation about Concentrating on the present moment helps you have control or some power over what's happening. And we tend to think about the future, right? And plan our to-do lists. And that can get really overwhelming, partially because you can't totally control what's going to happen in the future, but you do have control over right now. And so a lot of the mindfulness techniques are really helpful in training yourself to just be more present minded. Think about now, act in the now, um, and it tends to relieve some of that stress. So probably one thing that we all struggle with and maybe a little bit more so right now is this idea of work-life balance or uh, finding some kind of uh, way to coordinate all of the pressures that you might be experiencing at work and also completing all of those responsibilities that are uh, that you find at home um, and trying to have a bit of a personal life, right? So these recommendations on how to find a little bit more balance um, come from time.com, but they're also really in line with mindfulness. So if we just read through a couple of them, um, thinking about doing the important things right now or understanding that not everything is equally important and you can only again control certain things right now so that's going to help you with your work-life balance and also help you be more present-minded there's also an aspect of self-reflection which is really important in mindfulness so thinking about what are your personal values what is really important to you, and then acting on those things in the present moment. So um, each of these, again, will help you with that work-life balance, but also helps you understand and get in touch with this concept of mindfulness. The other thing that I really appreciate about mindfulness is that it's so easy to integrate into your routine. So it's not an extra thing to, you know, as Andrea said, another thing to put on your plate uh, to, to figure out how am I gonna juggle this uh, into my regular routine. With mindfulness, even small things can help you be more present focused. And the other thing that I want you to realize is that uh, mindfulness doesn't just mean um, meditation or, you know, sitting quietly somewhere and just breathing exercises. If that works for you, that's wonderful. If it doesn't, and you're maybe a more active person and you think, oh, I really struggle to, to center my thoughts or to stop my mind from racing. Well, if you need to be more active, you can participate in mindful walking. So if you have a couple minutes, maybe on a break or you know, in the morning you have some time to take a walk, you can be mindful in that way too. And to do that, we just really focus on our senses. So focus on what you see around you. Look at all the colors in the environment. Um, focus on the feeling of wind or the temperature that's out there. Um, thinking about the different sounds that you hear. So is there traffic? Uh, are there birds? Is there, you know, wind in the trees? That's a way to include some mindfulness into your, into your day. Um, maybe you are somebody who likes to write things down. So maybe journaling is a good option for you. Uh, gratitude journaling is a really common mindful practice where you can write down things that you're thankful for or uh, things that went well just keeping a, a mental note of those things helps you be more present-minded. 
If you're more on the creative side, uh, there's lots of arts and crafts that you can do. So scrapbooking is a great option. Um, even coloring, right? There's all sorts of adult color books out there. So that's a form of mindfulness as well. Take a break, uh, do a little bit of, of coloring and, and really kind of let all of those racing thoughts calm a little bit. Another option is mindful eating. So I know that you have to eat every day, right? So you can incorporate some of these mindful exercises there too. And even if you get, you know, only a couple minutes at lunch, take those couple minutes to really focus on the act of eating. So I know it's common for a lot of people to try to multitask. You know, I'm going to, I'll eat lunch while I'm also answering emails or while I'm also meeting with someone. Uh, but if you can take, carve out just a little bit of time there to really think about what are you eating? What does this food actually taste like? Look at your food, right? Look at all of the colors and the shapes and the textures. Uh, smell your food. Engage those senses, even if you've only got, you know, a quick five minutes and, and you really feel like you scarf down your lunch. If you can take just a couple moments to really reflect on what you're eating, that trains your mind to just be a little bit more present focused. Um, the other option for you is listening exercises. And there are lots of uh, guided practices that you can find very easily uh, online, on YouTube. Uh, some of these take the form of like a, a guided body scan, or there are other uh, breathing exercises or formal meditations that you can follow along with. So here's an opportunity for you to um, just really listen, relax, um, and, and just be guided through an exercise. And so that's actually what we're going to do today. Um, I'd like to go through a roughly five minute um, guided muscle scan for you. And I'll ask you to just give it a try, even if some of these guided practices aren't really for you and you think you might struggle with it. Um, if you'll give it a try today and maybe you'll find a new exercise that's really uh, useful to you. So like I said, we're gonna do a, a muscle scan or a, a muscle relaxation exercise. And Hopefully this will help you uh, relax a little bit, uh, help with some stress management. Now the idea here is that we will uh, clench and then release different parts of our body. And you want to, to feel that tension in your body, but not to the point of it hurting or feeling pain. Um, also, if there's any uh, parts of your body that may have an injury or if you have some chronic pain in some areas, please feel free to skip those and you can just follow along and of focus on your breathing. So I will start a little bit of soft music here just to relax you and we'll start by getting into kind of a comfortable position in our chair. And you should feel at ease, but not completely relaxed. And as you get comfortable, I'll have you draw your attention to the places of your body that come into contact with that chair. And now slowly close your eyes and take a deep breath in through the nose, holding it slightly, and now gently exhale out through the mouth, making sure that you're emptying the lungs completely. And take another breath in through the nose, holding it in, and slowly releasing out through the mouth. And continue breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth at your own pace. And 
And as you continue breathing, imagine all the stress that's in your body melting away and slowly move your attention all the way down to your feet. And focusing on your toes, begin to tense your feet by curling your toes under, remembering that you should feel a stretch and some tension, but not to the point of feeling pain. And hold that tension and then release. Notice the sensations in your body after you uncurl your toes. Next, we'll move your attention to your lower legs and begin clenching your calves. Hold that tension as you continue to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. and release the tension in your calves while moving your attention to your upper thighs and bring tension to the area by squeezing your thighs together and holding. And feel the stress in your body continue to melt away as you release the tension in your thighs and move to your stomach. Gently squeeze or suck in your stomach muscles and hold. And then release, noticing how your body feels from the waist down. And now move your focus to your fingers by making a fist with your hand. Feel the tension in your fingers, your wrists, and your lower arms. And keeping your fist clenched, slowly bend your arms at the elbow and begin to clench your upper arms and biceps. And continue holding, taking deep breaths and release. And allow your body to completely relax and continue your breaths. And now bring your attention to your neck and shoulders. Bring tension to the area by shrugging the shoulders or gently bending your head forward. Feel the stretch in your back and release. And finally, bringing focus to your face by wrinkling your nose, squinting your eyes, lowering your eyebrows, and clenching your cheek and muscles, your jaw just slightly, and hold that position and relax the face, feeling any tingling in your muscles. And scan your body for any lingering stress. And then let's bring tension to the entire body, squeezing your toes, your legs, your stomach, your hands, all the way up to your neck and face. Remembering to breathe, holding a little more and relax. And allow your body to rest. Notice the feeling of calm and the looseness of your body. We'll take one more breath in through the nose and a deep exhale out through the mouth. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes 
Maybe stretch out your muscles a little bit. Allow the body to wake up. And as you're doing that, um, I'll share a couple of resources with you. Um, another great way to include some mindfulness in your routine is through free apps that you can download to your phone. Um, so I've listed a couple here that are available to you. They're a really great resource because a lot of them will send you a reminder with a daily activity that you can do. Um, you can set up different routines, whatever works in your schedule. Um, and it's a, another way to have something kind of remind you uh, and help you include some mindfulness into your daily activities. So that is coming to the end of our presentation for you. Um, I usually like to end with one for more mindful activity. Um, a key aspect of mindfulness is also uh, making sure that you're focusing more on positivity. Uh, like Andrea mentioned, it's easy to get into those negative thought cycles and not only can you get trapped in them, but also people around you can get trapped in them. And so, um, we like to, to focus on the things that are going well, um, thinking about, you know, what are you grateful for? And so one activity that I like to do is to think about the things that I'm already doing to take care of myself or things that I'm already doing for self-care. Um, and even since you're here, you probably feel like you need some help with stress management um, or you're, you're just feeling a little on edge in general, but I bet there's things that you're already doing that are helping you kind of deal with some of this stress and you should give yourself credit for that. So even if it's something super small, it can really make a big difference in your um, just your general well-being. So um, I'm going to ask my colleagues if they will help me out a little bit here and if they would be willing to share just one thing, even something small that they try to do um, to, to take care of themselves and practice a little bit of self-care. Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> I'll go first real quick, Andrea, then I'll turn it over to you. I actually have two. Um, of course, I feel like yoga is something that I, I try to do as much as possible, but I, I will try to at night. I feel like especially at night is when I feel the most stress or maybe um, feelings in my, especially my muscles. So lately I've been trying to, at least at night, um, stretch my hips and stretch my neck and my shoulders. So even if it's only for a quick five minutes, I've been trying to at least do some form of stretching or practice of yoga at night, every night. And then another thing I've been doing, and I feel like this, to me, I feel like this is a form of stress management, but is trying to not be on my phone when my girls are still awake. I have two little girls, so I'm really trying hard not to be looking on my phone um, and them see me being on my phone for extended amount of times when they're awake. So I try to do it during the workday and then once they're um, sleeping at night. So those are two things that I've been doing. I already mentioned before that I exercise daily. And so um, I, I do different programs and you can go to the gym, um, you can practice at home. I, I tend to work out at home with different programs. And so I just finished a bar program and I really enjoyed it because it integrates a lot of what Nikki and Amber talked about today with being in the present moment and that mindfulness and positivity, that sort of thing. And, and now I'm doing a little kickboxing, so I like to change it up. But um, I also work really hard to be in the present moment with my family when I, I am around my children. And I also try really hard to look for the positive in situations and others. So for example, you know, if I'm sitting at a restaurant and my waitress is really slow, my mind actually goes to, oh, she must be really having a challenging night, or um, maybe there's just a lot going on in her life right now. And so really thinking about the positive in a situation and looking for the good in others as well, you know, whether it's your colleagues at work or maybe within relationships with your family, friends, parents, anybody in your life trying to look for the positive in the situation because again with that not a negative thought cycle we can get into it's really important to challenge ourselves to reframe and look for positives in any situation 
Yes, all very excellent ways to take care of yourself. Um, one thing that I've been doing lately, weather permitting, um, is that I'm trying to get up a little bit earlier and just take a little bit of time to uh, kind of relax right away in the morning. So I like to sit out on my front porch and typically with a, a mug of coffee um, and just kind of take in what's going on outside, what's happening in the neighborhood. And it's really nice to have that kind of quiet and calm right away in the morning before the day gets all hectic and busy. And uh, sometimes I can convince my husband to sit out there with me. So it's a nice time for us to just talk a little bit and sometimes that doesn't happen again until late at night so um, that's one thing that i've been attempting to do um, as our as my own routine has kind of been changed a little bit so all of these things are you know fairly simple things that we can do and again if you give yourself credit for for all the good that you're doing um, that's a step in the right direction. So I, I want to thank you all for joining us today and hopefully you can use some of these techniques to help with your own stress management.